Many of us are on this constant quest of trying to become more motivated, more productive. We seek these external inputs to try and get us going on a day-by-day -day basis. We watch motivational speakers on YouTube telling us we can do whatever we put our minds to. And quotes, if you leave me to the wolves, I'll come back leading the pack. And they work. We feel a temporary surge and a feeling of invincibility. We feel good at the time and we might actually get some things done. But then the reality hits us and the truth comes out. And it's that that very feeling that we had fades away as quickly as it rose up. So guys, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I never really do this myself. Like heck, I watch motivational videos every once in a while. I do share quotes and stuff and I watch people like Tony Robbins. The problem is that for many of us, that baseline drive and motivation can be quite low. And so we end up relying on these external inputs and motivations to give us a boost. And then we go back down to that very low baseline that we were at to begin with. And so rather what might be a solution is to try and work on that baseline and increase it. So that actually we can generate an inner drive, an inner motivation that lasts for far longer than just a few hours and a few days. And so the purpose of this video today is to talk about just that. Back when I was in high school, I had just moved to the UK. I was quite new and I'd only lived here for about two years. And the idea of getting into medical school was kind of playing on my mind for some time, but I wasn't entirely committed. So I'd done quite well in my GCSEs, which was the year before that, without very much effort. So I was able to select some specific subjects that would allow me into the pathway of applying for medical school. At the time though, to put it mildly, my mindset was less than ideal because I had done decent the year before, I automatically thought that I could just do the same for this year and the following year and everything would just kind of turn out fine on their own. The reason I'm telling you this is because during those few years, I made some fundamental mistakes that were not really conducive for generating inner self drive and motivation. And from this, I learned that there are two very important things that a person needs to keep in mind when they are working on something or working towards a goal. And if any parts of these two are missing, then it can be extremely difficult to generate that inner self drive and hunger from within. And the first thing is to do with value. The purpose of working towards that thing we want needs to hold enough value to us in our minds. And this is particularly true if that thing requires a huge amount of work. The more work it requires, the higher value it needs to hold for us too. For example, if I want to start going to the gym, then it would be wise to think a bit about what the reason is I want to go to the gym for. If it is that I want to be more healthy, then the natural question is how important is that purpose to us? Do I truly value health in my life? If we don't see the value in the things that we do every day, and especially the things that we want to do, then we're just not going to get it done. And if we do see the value in those things, then it's almost like we go into the state of autopilot and we just get things done no matter what we feel. I mean, look at this for hundreds and thousands and actually millions of people every day. How often do we need to feel self motivated to get up in the morning and go into work? We do it whether we feel good or whether we feel rubbish and we understand the consequences of not going into work, meaning that we will lose our income, we will lose our jobs, and most likely we'll lose the places we live in. And so we get up every morning because our work holds a huge amount of value to us. And so we get up and we do it without question. And when I think about how this affected me, I wasn't entirely committed to that purpose of getting into medical school and becoming a doctor. It played on my mind, but I wasn't set on it. And that combined with feeling like I don't really need to do much to achieve it in the first place just meant that it held less value than ideal in order to actually go on and achieve that thing. And obviously the natural thing that would come out of that is that it didn't actually work and I didn't get in back then. So the learning point is that when the purpose isn't valuable enough for us, it's very, very difficult to generate enough inner self drive to get that thing done. And the second point is about ability. One thing I've noticed is that often we work much harder at the things that we believe we can do than those where we continually doubt our abilities in. 
if we believe that our actions will lead to results, then we are much more likely to generate the inner drive to manifest those results. Now, I know this is slightly controversial because the reality is that not everyone is going to become good at everything. Like if I'm not athletically built to play basketball and I'm not tall enough, then I'm much less likely to go pro. Not everyone's going to become Michael Jordan or Mark Zuckerberg of the world. But I would argue that it's to our advantage to continue believing that we can do most of the things that we put our minds to, even if we eventually can't. Because what will end up happening is that at least we will not be limited by our own thoughts. We'd rather be limited by our ability. It's probably much worse failing without even trying when actually you will become quite good at that thing than if you try something and you fail because you just wasn't good enough. Because eventually you'll hit that jackpot where you're actually really good at that thing and you also continue to try really hard and you've got the work ethic at it. And that becomes the combo, the golden combo that everyone out there is looking for. Now this type of thinking doesn't come from anywhere. So I want to draw your attention to a concept that I've been thinking about for a while. So I want you to imagine a box and this box represents you. And inside the box, you have all your abilities, your aspirations, your skills, and your goals. And the edges or the walls of that box are the perceived limits that you have for yourself. So some people will have a large box because they feel like they can do most things that they set their minds to. And some people will have a much smaller box because they feel like most things in life they won't be able to do. So for me and you, we might have some things that are different distances away from our box like making a million pounds or getting our dream job and then further away from our box we might have public speaking or playing golf or whatever all of those things might be outside our box so one way that we can get all of those things into our box is by continually doing things that are outside the box it's essentially growing that box every time we do something that is outside the box something that we initially thought was really difficult and we go on to achieve that thing it becomes our new normal and what's interesting then is that our box then grows to encompass a lot of things that we initially thought were impossible to us and when you think about it if that box is you then it's you that is growing if we continually do things that stretch our box that are the limits and the edges of our box then we build a track record of things that we can look back at and I can say hey I gave a speech last year to 500 people at a conference so this 1,000 people conference or 1,500 people conference that I've got coming up next year, I can probably do. I did it last year. This is just slightly bigger. There's no reason why I can't do this. And then actually you can extrapolate between different events. Like if you give a speech at a conference with 1,000 people, there's no reason why you can't pitch your product to a group of 10 investors or whatever. And all in all, if we believe that we can do all of those things, it is far easier to then generate the drive to do those things. So what are some action points that we can do to generate some inner self-motivation? The first thing is to take a moment before embarking on a new journey or even every once in a while to really evaluate our purpose. Sometimes things can be really valuable to us, but we don't know it yet. And other times we can even assign a new purpose to some things so that they become even more valuable to us. Take some time to sit down and write down the purpose of why you do things. And one interesting thing I can just kind of slide in here is that every time you want to do something, ask yourself why five times. And if you do that and you get to the last why, then that is the purpose, or the true purpose of why you're doing it. So if I want to go to the gym, then I ask myself why? And the reason is because maybe I want to get stronger and why do I want to get stronger? Because I want to be more healthy. Why do I want to be more healthy? Because I want to spend time with my family. Why do I want to spend time with my family? And you keep going like that. And that will kind of bring out the true purpose. And the second action point is to constantly do things that are at the edges of our limits and make sure that we actually go on to achieve those things to increase our confidence. For example, whenever I start on something, I make sure that my priorities are set. The thought is that I'll make sure that I achieve X, Y, and Z no matter what. And when you continue to achieve these things, then your box expands. And when your box expands, you start to actually feel like there are no limits except the ones you set for yourself. 
So thank you for watching. That is everything I had to say. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then consider subscribing. I'm also on loads of other social medias. I'm on Instagram. I post day-to-day -day stuff. Follow me there if you'd like. And that's it. Safe.